Hi, it's Emily. Today I'm going to talk about how to practice right shirt number two. So I really like this exercise. Um, sometimes I don't practice it as a technical exercise as much as a sound exercise because I think arpeggios are good for that. So these are our arpeggios with a twist because usually if you do, let's say, a C major arpeggio, you do C, E, G, first, third, and fifth note of the scale. Uh, but here you also have the, um, you have that chord, that C major chord, if you're in C major. And then you have the G dominant seventh, you know, you have the G, B, D, F. And then he plays with those, he alternates those. And in music, you very often get them like that because those two chords go together, the one and the five, the tonic and the dominant. Uh, so he does that for every, every key. And so it goes like this. Okay, so you can practice it uh, to go fast, you know. First time you, you learn the notes, just, I like to tongue every note, just play every note slowly, because sometimes when students learn something that they want to play fast, they tend to go very fast and skip notes. I feel like by tonguing each note and playing them, you learn, you learn it the right way. So just go. and try to keep a good sound on each note as much as possible. Um, then you can use a metronome and you start a bit slowly. Let's say like this. Okay, so that's 80 per quarter note might, might be a bit too fast. So, you know, you go with, with what is good for you. Then I'll do a hundred. If you're learning it, maybe you'll be at 80 for a little while and then it might take you a whole week to go from 80 to 92, let's say. It's okay, you know. I built my technique through years of practice. So now 120. Okay, there's always the same things that I use. I use a lot of uh, rhythms. No stopping on the first note, then I'll stop on the last note. Okay, and you go up and up and up until 152. Um, I'll play also the minor one so you hear what it sounds like. So A minor. Okay, then if I want to bring it to 152, um, you know, I might work like this. Put my metronome at 152 and do little sprints. Okay, then I'll do two beats.
remember to br keep your fingers close to the keys as close as possible uh, then I'll do like I'll try to do like four beats So I'll try to do the whole thing, but we'll see. Yeah, kind of. It's good to push yourself, you know. Even if it's not perfect, then you, you know, pushes yourself. If you always do what's comfortable, then, um, you know, you don't really get better. So I wasn't very comfortable, but that's good for me. And then once in a while, do it slowly, just... You know, go back to slowness, go back to, to make sure you don't learn mistakes. But the real way I love to work on that is for the sound. So what I do, let's say um, I'll do the C major one again, one octave higher, because I like to use it to work on my high notes, piano and legato. And so you see, I visualize it as, let's say this is the sound. And I only take the top layer of that sound. I only take like, it's, it's like just this little top layer. Listen. It's almost, it's barely there, you see? And to, in order to achieve that, I make a lot of space in my mouth. And, uh, you know, um, I really open in the back. And I support a lot, a lot of support, but not that much air. So I'll do that again. Ah, that's the color I was looking for. opposition to that type of sound that's very full but I'm not working on that I'm working on very very soft and very legato when, my, when I make my students work on that what I notice it's usually they do the first few notes very well and then they forget and they start pushing more so try to just do the whole exercise like this like this, like let's say I do the E minor. It's just, a, it's really an exercise to um, kind of push your limits because like, first I think practicing piano is a good way to get a um, centered sound, you know, and also it's good to work on our dynamic range and, um, and our different tone colors. So that's an exercise that I like to use for that. And whenever you have the 8VA, so playing it an octave higher, if it's a possibility in the exercise, and I do it for the sound aspect, then then I, I do the 8V. So that's how I work on, on that exercise. I hope this video was helpful. 
If it was, you can use the super thanks button to help us out directly. You can also like and subscribe and see you next time.